Hi guys, it's Ryan, and today's video is on getting started with Corvus and Bailey's Infinity N4, or 4th edition. This video will cover using either N4 or Code 1 to start, and what's the differences when learning to play the game. So to be clear and upfront, the goal of this video is learning to play Infinity N4, or what I might refer to as Full Fat Infinity, as in Full Fat Coke. If you find this video helpful, then please like and subscribe. So what is Code 1 and N4? Well, I'll talk about it more in the video, but the long and short of it is that N4 is the fourth edition of Corvus Belly's Infinity and considered the main game. It is continually supported each month and updated regularly with FAQs and new models. Code 1, however, is a beginner focused offshoot version of N3 or third edition with reduced rule sets, but still a full game in its own right. It only has eight factions made up of trimmed down selection of units to get people involved in the game. Many people do play this as the main game, which is fair, but that's not for me. Infinity scratches my skirmisher itch, but it can be complex, which is why Corvus Belly developed Code 1. So for starting the game with the goal of playing N4, where do you begin? Well, to be honest, it's kind of much of a muchness and it depends on a couple of things. One, do you have an existing community to join? What are they playing? And how willing are they to teach you a game, a given system? If you're joining, say, your local game store's Infinity Group, and they have pretty solidly into N4, and they're willing to take the time to run simple games and get you up to speed, then N4 is a system for you. If it's largely Code 1, then go with that. If there's no group at all, and you're starting from absolute scratch, I might recommend Code 1, as you can get a two-player starter and build up your game knowledge there. This is mostly because the missions are specifically built around learning to play the game, so it's pretty much the perfect resource. I'll talk more about this later. If you're starting online, N4 is far more supported from what I've seen, but there are groups dedicated to supporting beginning players on TTS, such as the IGL Discord and the unofficial Infinity Discord. Overall, this video is a very high level and sort of mental checklist and jumping off point for you to go out and find more via the Reddits, forums and Discord and local groups to get into the meat and potatoes of the game. So if you're coming from another game, be it Skirmisher or Mass Combat, then this bit will help you get a quick grip of what's going on if not, this bit is focused on translating armies from other games into Infinity. It may be of some value to you if you like specific types of play in XCOM or strategy games, or if you want to hear Infinity's take on certain things. While I might mention armies that fit these themes, these are not full recommendations since that can be a video unto itself. I believe Warlord has a good video and I'll link it to the card above. First off is Horde armies, or armies that overwhelm their opponent with lots of models. Sorry to say, but Horde armies don't exist in N4, you're an addition late. N3 had no cap on troopers you could take, N4 only permits 15 order generating troopers in an army list at 300 points, which is the traditional play level. You might bring more with peripheral sinks and decoys, but it's still only 15 models in the list, and then maybe some McGubbins. However, you can still sort of keep the theme of a horde army, having cheap disposable trash troopers to throw at your enemy to weaken defences before smashing into them with a big gun. Pan Oceani has robots such as Peacemaker and Bulleteer, Ariadna has all manners of warbands, so does the Combined Army. These last two let you take maybe 3 or 4 cheap costing units, maybe around 10 points or about 3% of your total list value, and just lets you trade up and make up their points back two, three, maybe even as much as five times their value in an advantageous trade. I've seen elite armies come up a few times with people asking about playing really elite armies as small as possible and I'm also going to say that this is not really a thing. In Infinity, every unit you take generates an order. Every order you generate is another activation of maybe the right piece to move you towards a win. 15 is the maximum and for many people the minimum number of troopers they take to a game because this allows to make sure they're always topped up on orders. You can go less once you learn the game, 10 to 13 can work, but it is also important to say that Infinity is a hyper lethal game in which your basic 10 point guy with a rifle could in theory take down something that is a quarter of your list if you get really really unlucky. So if you only take 10 guys, which is the absolute bare minimum and usually only done in like three or four armies that can support this, every model you lose drastically impacts your ability to carry out the mission. If your opponent has more orders than you, they have a legitimate strong advantage. So say you want to do these 10 unit armies. Well, there is Steel Phalanx, Invincible Army, and parts of Combine Army. They usually have ways for models to generate a couple of orders per model rather than just one, and usually can make this work by having some really bulky models. 
one of the meta lists at the moment, and it's meta because the guys who play it know their stuff, is essentially five heroes, two pretty decent generic units, three robots in one combat group, and these 10 models bring around 14 to 15 orders in 10 really tough to kill packages. If you want elite, my recommendation is something like this, but only sort of venture here after you've learned the game and you're comfortable with what you're doing and what you'll need to avoid, because this and the Imperial Army list have massive weaknesses to combos like hacking and guided missile strikes. I've seen control and magic armies come up a few times, and good news it is possible to run control armies through the use of hacking, Tohar fart magic, template weapons including mines, camo workers, and good long range shooting. Control and infinity is usually handled by getting hackers and template users into the midfield and making it difficult for the enemy to approach you or an objective. This works by setting up hackers to debuff, immobilize, or steal your opponent's models on approach. Or in the case of templates or mines, the enemy now has to spend orders to get around these templated danger zones and if they get unfortunately too close, they can end up getting hurt pretty badly as a result. Another way to control the board is through the use of camo markers to implicitly threaten areas of the map as your opponent has no idea what is under the marker so they may spend time dealing with that rather than dealing with the objectives. If you've positioned it well, it now poses a dilemma. Sacrifice orders that could go towards objectives to deal with a camo marker or get an objective and hope what under that camo marker won't hack them, template them or shoot them surprisingly well. Finally, having good shooters well positioned on buildings means that your opponent will struggle to approach objectives without generally eating pot shots from your guys in order to get the mission done. In general, control armies tend to make it difficult for your opponent to do the mission without eating orders, dealing with or to avoid big issues. Every army has elements of this, but Combine Army, Yujing, Nomads and Ariadna represent control, with Hackers, Camo and Mines, but Pan Oceania, O12 and Combine Army represent it through fire lane control. Melee Armies they exist, but focusing solely on melee is kind of a trap. It's good and it can be a really useful tool, but it's not as efficient as shooting to deal with your opponent. The caveat here is that melee armies tend to have worse shooting, but effective enough shooting or some other tool to allow them to close the gap and melee your enemy. Melee armies are usually Steel Phalanx, Japanese Successionist Army, Military Orders, the Caledonian Highlander Army, and Cosmoflot. These armies don't just melee, but they are very good at it and can use it as a massive deterrent to prevent your opponent throwing cheap trash at it to tie up expensive models, or you can use it to target something not everyone does well. Melee does allow cheap models to punch up and more costly models from getting punched from below and punching up further themselves. Finally, if you like shooting armies, good news. Infinity is very much a shooting game as it's the most effective way to kill things and most factions have some way to do it well, be it tags, heavy infantry, or some weird combination of the two. All factions can do shooting, but Pan Oceania, Combine Army, and O12 are the kings of firepower, specifically Svalharima Winter Force, Morat Aggression Force, and Vanilla Combine Army, and O12. If you want to cause difficulty to your opponent, look for units with visors, albedo, and mimetism when choosing your shooters. So before you have a rough idea of what you want to play, you might want to get an understanding of the rules. Well, good news, unlike some other war games, all the rules are free for N4 and Cold One and with a fully supported wiki and army builder app to make lists. Just simply go to the Corvus Belly website to get a PDF copy. FAQs and updates to all the armies are also free and downloadable from the same place. The wiki is a fantastic piece of software that I use pretty much every game, but it's not 100% up to date with the FAQs, so be careful to have both open. When you're playing, I really recommend having a copy of the rules, be it physical, which you can buy if you want, but it's not updated at all, PDFs in case the Wikipedia goes down, or the wiki itself and the latest FAQ. That should pretty much cover the rules. For your army list, use the Infinity Army app, where you can build, store your lists here, and it has a convenient play mode on the mobile version. You'll still need to print them out for IRL stuff, but that can be done on the web version where you can share the army code along with save it against your online account, which is also free and is your also affinity official tournament account. In general, Corvus Belly have really focused on free and open rules and updates to the game, and I think it makes it incredibly easy to get started with the game. Now to start playing the game itself. Ignoring the models for now, since that's the topic I'll cover in a minute, but I wanted to focus specifically on getting to playing with them. As mentioned before, there is Code 1 and N4. Code 1 is the simpler game focused on starting new players off on the game, and N4 is the 4th edition of the main Infinity of the Game. N4 is more supported and updated regularly, and is generally considered the main game to work towards. 
This video is about getting into N4 after all via Code 1, but it's still N4 or bust. If you start with Code 1, which is probably the best thing if you're starting from absolute scratch with a group of two or more new players, Code 1 provides beginner missions to slowly learn the game with models provided in one of the Code 1 operation boxes. However, with a bit of common sense, you can use any faction to play these missions. These missions start with a basic of three light line infantry versus three line infantry, talking about the basics of activation and order generation and slowly building up to include heavy infantry and the full contents of the box with the army that you're playing. I'm not saying buy the box as this content is available on Tabletop Simulator if you wish to play there for only the cost of Tabletop Simulator. If you do get an operation box and start with Code 1, this will cover pretty much all your bases to start with, so it's a very good shout. Going through these missions and learning the rules, you can then move to a 15 point, 20 point, and then finally 25 and 30 point games in Code 1. This will help you get a good grasp of the system and the core concepts of Infinity, ranging from activation and order generation to AROs and camouflage. Additionally, there are a few competitive oriented missions in the ITS 14 document under the Direct Action heading to try out if you want to look into the competitive aspect of the game. Once you're comfortable with Code 1, you will eventually transition to N4 if your group wants to get the, what many consider the full Infinity experience. This jump can be a bit daunting at first, but N4 offers more complexity, but more models and more options which you can thoroughly sink your teeth into. Overall, Code 1 is perfect for slowly learning the game before moving on. If you are doing the N4 route, it's surprisingly similar, but officially less set out. Much like Code 1, you can start with simple 3v3 matches before moving on to building out a small force to help you learn army appropriate rules like close combat, hacking, camouflage, and impersonation. This is made easier if you already have experienced N4 players helping you along or mentoring a group of new players. There are no official books that describe this or lay out the process, so it will need to be done by best judgment or by grabbing the Code 1 starting guides and essentially playing N4 with these missions, which I'm not sure if I should recommend as I don't know how compatible it is and how much chopping and changing there will be, which could just be a bit too much. For example, the action sequence is slightly different in N4 with inclusions of guts and other abilities. If you have an experienced player though, they may be able to make this up as they go fairly easily and move at a good pace for your group. Once you understand the basics of N4, you can move to 150 point, then 200 point, then finally 300 point games, and expand from there to ITS or narrative campaigns, whatever your local scene is doing. Escalation leaks for both systems can also be a solid thing to look into as you can get, learn and advance with your friends. As a last thing to note, I haven't really touched on picking an N4 faction, as that's entirely up to you, your wallet, and a lot more details, resources than I can provide. But I want to touch on the Discord regarding starting and learning with a Sectorial army or a sub-faction of tightly themed models or learning a vanilla or full faction. The advantages of starting with a vanilla army in N4 is that you aren't limited on what sub-faction models you can take, so you can play a fairly mismatched army of all of Pan Oceania or whatever. Additionally, you can learn the game without learning the more complex fire team rules bogging you down. The downside to vanilla is that it can get a bit of analysis paralysis with the number of models available in general and specifically within each role. Learning a sectorial such as military orders, Tunguska or Shabasti means you can pick from less units but roles tend to be more clearly defined and less duplicates and the theming is very tightly defined which is great for me personally. You also get some sectorial exclusive profiles which help power up sectorial alongside powerful fire team roles. The downside is that if you like two different sectorial models outside of Proxian, you're not going to be able to play a Kamau and a Knight Hospitaller together unless it's vanilla Pan Oceania. If you want to try the game before you buy models, paints and whatnot and you have Tabletop Simulator and don't mind playing on it, then I recommend trying the game on Tabletop Simulator. It currently has a large community that is pretty appreciative of new players and willing to help those start in the game. A major example of this is the IGL Mentor Program, which is going strong and seems to be pushing to get an N4 Escalation League going. They also have a one-to-one -one mentoring occasionally thanks to a mentor system, which I believe takes the form of list advice, practice games, with mentors across the globe. Even besides that, newer players are often asking for games against each other and looking for group chats. So getting one or two together isn't too difficult. Overall, Tabletop Sim will mean you can play with a ton of models and profile and really get to see what faction suits you. However, if you're ignoring Tabletop Sim or finally getting around to pick up some models and going from there, you'll want to know what you need. To play a full game of N4, you'll need about 15 models. Fortunately, there are plenty of packs of models to help get you started. 
Going with the Code 1 box route, there are 4, but soon to be 6 or even 8 in the future action packs that will give you between 9 and 10 models for their faction in Code 1. One for Pan Oceania, Yujing, O12, Combined Army, coming soon, Ariadna and Nomad, and currently in a 2 player box which will be split out next year is Hakislam and Leth. These are excellent for starting the game with Code 1, but in N4 it will key off specific sectorials, but can be used for vanilla armies. Pan Oceania is Winter Force, Yujing is for White Banner, O12 is mostly for Vanilla, Combine Army is for Shavasti, Ariadna is for Cosmoflot, Nomad is for Kregador, Hakislam is for Assassin's Baram, and Aleph is Steel Phalanx. Other Sectorios have their own starting boxes which are really good starter kicks with Corvus Belly's move to Fireteam packs for factions. They can be ridiculously easy to expand with. Unfortunately they are pretty much for N4 only. If you want to see the contents of the Military Order Box and hear how effective it is for the Space Knight faction, you can go watch my video here for a purchase guide. But if you're starting with N4 with the 3 Light Infantry versus 3 Light Infantry, then building from a Sectorial pack is a good idea. Operation Boxes, I've mentioned a few times now, are the 2 player, 2 faction box in recent years that have been supporting Code 1 releases, and contain models for each faction. Some terrain, tokens and dice for each faction, and some starter missions. Which is a really neat set. If you can get this and spill it with a friend or whatever, then it's a fantastic start to playing the game and always contains a good few stunning models. See about 10-15 to 15 minutes ago for my starting advice for Code 1. Once you're settled with what faction you're playing and have your first few models, look up some buying guides as these will usually guide you towards what to get you to the full 300 point list, but also what is good in your faction. Also you can just ignore these lists and get whatever looks cool and proxy. So your models are sorted. What next? So next up, to play the game, you'll need dice and tokens. Fortunately, you only need 6 20-sided dice, which is about 3 to £7 pounds on Amazon or eBay, so nice and easy to find. Or better yet, go to your local gaming store and support them and buy them there. Or find your friendly local dungeon master and mug them for dice. You also may want some for scoring, so D10s or D12s could work, but scrap paper is also fine. Next up, you'll need tokens for the game. If you started with an operation box, you'll probably have some. If not, it gets a bit tricky. Why the tokens? Well, tokens track orders, order spends, and the status effects on your units. So they are an important as dice to play in the game, so getting some is not optional. So no box. How do I get some? Well, eBay to see if people are selling them first. If not, the cheapest way to go about it is to get some printer paper and go to these two websites and print off the tokens. Usually what you'll need is about 15 regular orders, 10 irregular order tokens, somewhere between 2 to 5 impetuous orders, more if you're Ariadna, 2 lieutenant tokens, 4 to 5 command tokens, then a bunch of camo and impersonation tokens, and status markers as required. Ariadna won't need the hackable ones, but military orders might. Oh, and about 4 suppressive fire tokens. This isn't a definitive list, but it's like a good recommendation that will cover most armies. To step up the quality from just bits of paper, you can get little plastic coin holders that are about 25 to 15 millimeters across and put the paper inside this. This acts to give your tokens a bit more durability. Stepping up from this again, you could 3D print a bunch if that's something you do or you know someone who does. Finally, the most expensive option, but probably the best quality one, is to buy some acrylic ones from somewhere like MicroArt Studios or Europe and somewhere equivalent in the US, I believe War Arsenal. These are really nice quality, but they are a bit more expensive and subject to availability. Especially if you live in the UK like me, as a lot of shops seem to be on the mainland Europe. These though are very durable and very clear to read from. So as a terminally online tabletop sim player, although I'm hoping to get started IRL now, uh, terrain and board building is something I know very little about. However, from asking around on Discord and looking at old messages, it seems that getting started for terrain isn't too bad. If you have an operation box then you're on your way to a good start as this and expansions should get you started with 150 point games. However for a full 300 point game of Infinity it seems like 3 or even 4 of these main packs then grabbing 1 or 2 of these expansions depending on how dense you like your tables will get you going. Scatter terrain at least in my opinion is a must which you do get in the above packs, but you should grab or make little billboards, cards and benches to really flesh out a table as you move to the 300 point mark, and it really makes tables more interesting to look at. Third party terrain like MDF stuff is also greatly recommended once you're kind of fully into the terrain building side of the game. You can get some really nice, complicated and sprawling stuff for your tables that looks great, but it needs to be known that this is a step above or two 
from starting and many don't really get into this side of the hobby. Really, I lack the expertise to make a solid recommendation here, but at least a couple of these terrain kits from Corvus Millie and looking at online tables will help you get an idea to start. Finally, table layout and table design is yet another video unto itself, but I'll leave you with this litmus test I've found for a table. What missions are being played on it? Does it have long fire lanes? Does it have short fire lanes? Do you have a place for templates to hide? Do you have a place for tags to hide? Can REMs get around? Is one deployment zone better than the other? Are deployment zones fair? How easy is it to get safely from one deployment zone to the other? How can links move through it safely? How much control do ARO PCs have? And that was my video on getting started with Infinity. I hope this has been helpful and if it was, subscribe and like the video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.